Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr and today is Mistype Monday. So today let's talk about the four most common INFP mistypes. And now because most people take personnel tests based on the dichotomies, most people will mistype as either INF, uh, ISFPs, ENFPs, INTPs, or INFJs. So now let's start with the INFP, INTP mistype. Now, if you know the cognitive functions, this mistype might seem a bit strange to you, but most people only look at the letters and there might be some INFPs out there that have an unclear preference and feeling and thinking. So INFPs and INTPs, they might look very similar because they have the same temperament. They are more cautious, they are more, more methodical, they like to observe how other people do things and then give feedback rather than go and do it themselves. So looking at purely a perspective of introversion, these two types are quite similar. However, when you start looking at intuition, you already start noticing some differences. INTPs are more comfortable entertaining far-fetched or crazy thoughts. They like talking about eccentric topics and different opinions. Even if some of those go against their own values, they can discuss differing views and different perspectives, even if they personally have emotional attachments or opinions about it. They can let go of those and detach and just talk about it on that spectrum. That means they are slightly more intuitive. INTPs are a little bit more intuitive than INFPs. On the other hand, when you look at feeling and thinking, you get two very opposite types of personalities because, well, obviously the INFP is feeling dominant. That means feelings dominate the life and the values and the decision-making process of the INFP. The INFP goes to themselves, reflecting on their own deeper intentions, needs, and values, and then they make decisions based on those. INTPs, they look at things more objectively and try to distance themselves from their own feelings and instead try to think about it from a perspective of problem solving and rational thought. Okay, what is smart? What is the Thing that most people would do in this situation. How can I get the best score out of this? Or how can I do to operate in this room? Beyond that, INTPs are a lot more critical and a lot more negative and see things, see more problems and more issues where INFPs tend to be more accepting, more forgiving, more tolerant and be more everyone does their thing, everyone has their own needs. Finally, looking at perceiving, INFPs are a bit more adaptable while INTPs are a bit less adaptable. That means INTPs are a little bit more organized, a little bit more neat, a little bit more meticulous, and INFPs are a little bit more freedom-oriented, adventurous, and short-term. That means INFPs, they like to go and do things day by day, while INTPs, they might want a few more plans and a few more decisions. So, in that way, these types are quite easy to tell apart. If you go to INFP, INFJ mistypes, these are some of the most common. Now you'd think there's just one letter difference, so not a big problem, right? But wrong. If you look at it, INFJs are far more outgoing than INFPs. Already on the scale of introversion, INFJs are more open to start up conversations with other people and more open to initiate socially and more comfortable with being initiated on. That means when an INFJ is approached, an INFJ will be immediately more open with themselves and will be more talkative and more chatty, while an INFP will prefer to observe what does this person want, can I trust this person, can I open up to this person, what can I say, what should I say to this person. So already here you see some big differences, despite the two of them being both introverted. INFPs are also, once again, less intuitive, but even less than INFJs. So INFJs are intuitive dominance, INFPs are feeling dominance. That means an INFJ makes the decisions and observes and prefers to look at and learn and form theories about things, while an INFP likes to look at and develop value systems, morals, and opinions about things. That means INFPs are oriented by decision-making and values, INFJs are oriented by learning and theorizing. So completely different interests, while both are intuitive and both will enjoy talking about intuition and creativity with each other, the INFJ will out-intuit the INFP very quickly, and INFP will think that INFJ is a bit crazy or a bit eccentric, so yes, there's that. Beyond that, INFPs might find INFJs a bit cold and a bit detached, because INFJs are more comfortable setting aside their own feelings and their own opinions and just talking about things from a theoretical standpoint.
without forming an opinion about something, just talking about it and just reflecting on it, what it could be and seeing it from different perspectives. The INFP will be with more like, what do you want? What, do you, what is your opinion? What do you think about it? Then finally, perceiving. INFJs are on the border of judging and perceiving. That means they are mediators. They tend to bridge group interest with personal interest. INFJs tend to look at what do I want and what does the group want and how do we form a harmony or peace between that. INFPs are far closer to the individualist and freedom scale. That means an INFP is less likely to compromise with the group and less likely to adjust to what the group says. An INFJ is more open to adjust their actions and behavior to the needs of other people. INFP and ISFP mistype. So this one makes a lot more sense. When you look at INFPs and ISFPs, they are actually quite a lot alike. So this should be the most common mistype, but it's not because there is a lot of stereotyping around sensors. But both these types, they're quite introverted. They are very different when it comes to intuition and sensing. So they have very different interests and hobbies, but they are very similar when it comes to emotional aspects and values. And you know, that's the most important thing to these types. And so it makes them very similar to one another. INFPs and ISFPs will have good conversations about their value systems, their beliefs, their, what's important to them, their goals, their feelings, their uh, identity. They'll enjoy talking about and reflecting on these things together. Beyond that, both of them are quite adaptable and easygoing. So both will go with the flow and tend to be a bit more focused on themselves and their own needs and their own freedom and self-expression. Now, the way you can tell these two types apart is first, of course, the sensory types. They are more practical, they are more disciplined, they are better at being on time, they are better at uh, putting in the dirty work, they're better at uh, going with the details and working through the details, focusing, and they are a little bit less adaptable, a little bit more group oriented. Finally, we have INFP and ENFP mistypes. So, okay, INFP and ENFP mistypes, they happen quite a lot. Uh, despite that, ENFPs are ambiverts. That means ENFPs can easily mistype as introverts. INFPs usually know they are introverts. So that's one big tell. Another thing is INFPs are far less intuitive. Once again, this has been explained. And INFPs are far more feeling. That means usually ENFPs, they are on the border of feeling and thinking. That means they tend to be um, better at being objective and staying impartial and making a decision based on what is logical and what is rational, setting aside their feelings and just looking at things logically. Finally, an INFP is a little bit less adaptable, a little less freedom-oriented. The ENFP being the most freedom-oriented personality type of them all. So yeah, those are the four most common INFP mistypes. As an INFP, which type do you tend to mistype with the most and which type would you like to look at more? Don't forget to check out my video on INFP and INFJ differences or perhaps my video on INFP and ENFP differences where you can learn more about these things and how to tell the difference between these types. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.